Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and this Bumblebee yellow car is the 2014 Fiat 500 Pop. This is the least expensive member of the Fiat 500 family in America. Let's start out with the side profile so you can see exactly how small the Fiat 500 is. While this may be about 33 inches longer than something like a Smart 4.2, it is 8 inches shorter than a Mini, and that's about 3 feet shorter than something like a Ford Fiesta, a Nissan Sentra, something along those lines. The Fiat 500 is a relatively small car. The 500 is a 4-seat vehicle, not a 5-seat vehicle like you'd expect out of most compacts or subcompacts in the United States. So something like a Toyota Corolla, a Honda Civic, a Mazda 3, something along those lines, even a Mazda 2 or a Ford Fiesta, they are going to seat 5 and the 500 is only going to seat 4. Most of the room is actually taken up by those rear seats in the Fiat 500. So versus something like a Mini Cooper, Mini Cooper has a decent amount more cargo area, but you can see from this side profile that the rear seats end right about here. So that doesn't leave you a whole lot of rear cargo area. Front end styling is undeniably cute and attractive in the Fiat 500. We have these round headlamps. These are round daytime running lamps in our particular model. If you opt for the various trim levels of the Fiat 500, you get a little bit more chrome all the way around. This is the base model, so we don't have quite as much chrome crim going on all the way around the vehicle. Rear end styling is very attractive on the 500. We have a single exhaust tip right over there, and most of the rear end is taken up by the sloping large rear hatch right here. This is relatively easy to get cargo in and out of the 500. This is a fairly large hatch. The other thing you notice from the back end is how relatively wide of a track the 500 is. This helps with the handling and how relatively narrow the passenger compartment is in the 500 as well. Overall, I give the 500 7 out of 10 points in my exterior style score. I find this sloping rear hatch very attractive. It is unfortunately not that practical. So if you look at something like a Volkswagen Golf or other very practical European hatches, they have a very vertical rear glass so you could stick more cargo in the back. And that really does limit the rear seat headroom as well as the cargo area in the 500. All Fiat 500 models sold in America use a 1.4 liter multi-air four-cylinder engine. Multi-air is Fiat's name for a variable valve timing as well as variable valve duration system. It's quite similar to BMW's Valvetronic system, and with this system you don't actually have a throttle valve anymore in the car. Instead, the valves just open and close and they can vary how much they open and close and how long they open and close in order to control the throttle in the engine. It's quite an interesting design. It not only improves performance, but it also improves fuel economy as well as reduces emissions. In the regular Fiat 500, like we're taking a look at right here, this engine produces 101 horsepower and 98 pound-feet of torque. You can get this model with a turbocharger in two different flavors. There's the Fiat 500 Turbo, and that gives you 135 horsepower and 150 pound-feet of torque. It's an awful lot more fun in a car like this. It really is very noticeable in terms of speed improvement. And you can also get the Abarth model, which will produce 160 horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque from essentially that same turbocharged engine. Fuel economy really depends on which model you get as well as what transmission you get. The most efficient model is the one that we're testing right here, and that's with the five-speed manual transmission. It gets 31 miles per gallon in the city, 40 on the highway, with a combined average of 34 miles per gallon. If you opt for the Abarth, it still gets the manual transmission, but fuel economy drops down to 28 in the city, 34 on the highway, for a combined rating of 30 miles per gallon. An important thing to keep in mind with the Fiat 500 is that all of these engine variants are designed to run on premium unleaded gasoline. That's not too rare in Europe, but it is somewhat unusual in the US to have a relatively inexpensive car like this running on premium gasoline. While Fiat and Chrysler tell us that this vehicle will run very safely on regular unleaded gasoline, they also tell us that you may not get the same horsepower figures, torque figures, or fuel economy figures that have been quoted if you don't run this on premium. We scored 6 out of 10 points when it comes to front seat comfort in the 500. We don't have a power seat option in the 500 and the range of motion is a little bit limited. We have this lever right here for up and down on the seat. We can move the seat forward and backwards with this bar and the recline lever is over on this other side of the seat. You also won't find an adjustable lumbar support in the Fiat 500 and the steering column is tilt only. It does not telescope at this time. Well, front seat comfort scored 7 out of 10 points, rear seat comfort scored 8 out of 10 points, surprisingly enough. It is very relative, of course. I'm comparing this most directly to something like a Scion IQ or the Mini Cooper. So I'm going to go ahead and patch in that rear seat segment from the child seat video right now. You are no doubt wondering if it is actually possible to fit two adults, one behind the other, in the Fiat 500. Let's test that out now. I have this front seat adjusted for me at six feet tall. It is a little bit close to the steering wheel, mind you, for some people, but I tend to like to sit in a relatively upright position and relatively close to the pedals, especially if I'm driving a manual, like our Fiat 500 is so equipped right here. So let me hop out and see if I can get in the back. Rear seats are fairly easy to get in and out of because of the height of the Fiat 500. It has kind of a cartoonish profile because of the very upright profile. 
but I can actually sit behind myself. There's not a whole lot of headroom back here, so if you're taller than maybe about five foot ten, then you may have a problem. I can't sit totally upright in the back, but I do have a reasonable amount of width back here, so I can strap myself in and I can sit right next to this child seat. So it is possible for two people and a rearward facing child seat to fit in the Fiat 500. Let's take a quick look around the interior. We have these injection molded plastic headrests on the front and the rear seat. So if we look back there, they're exactly the same. We do not have height adjustable seat belts for the driver or the front passenger. Plenty of hard plastics going on on the door panels and we have a fabric coated soft touch armrest right there for the driver and the front passenger. You won't find electric power door lock buttons on the Fiat 500. Instead, the handle serves as both the lock and the unlock button as well as the door handle. You just move it in that way to unlock. You push it into lock and it will actually repeat that same process on the other door. So if I pull the driver's side door handle, you can see how that locks and unlocks right there. Moving across to the dashboard, we have body color paint matching dashboard trim right here. You can also see that you can see the painted portion of the door right there on the passenger side. Although a lot of cars have this painted trim showing right here, the painted door panel right there. You can actually see that's the metal part of the door. A lot of subcompacts have that, but I think that having the body color panel on the inside of the car really helps make that match a little bit better rather than looking uh, like a regular subcompact car. We have a decently sized glove box right here, and this is also where you'll find the USB and auxiliary input for the radio in the 500. The dashboard is made of relatively hard injection molded plastics and here we have the standard radio interface for the Fiat 500. I won't have a separate infotainment video on this because it is fairly basic. It's your average radio interface with iPod and USB integration. It does show music information right there on the screen. You can also use this interface to navigate around your iDevice or your USB stick, but it's not quite as easy to do as using a touchscreen. Down below we have single zone manual climate control in our particular 500. If you had additional options, there would be some other buttons right there. Power window switches, five speed manual transmission in our particular 500. Moving down, we have three relatively large cup holders. This one can handle a large or an extra large soda, and these two outboard cup holders can handle medium sized sodas. Obviously you can't have these two used at the same time, so you can either use those two or you can use this one larger cup holder that does reduce the usability of these cup holders just a little bit. We have a slot right here where you can stick your mobile phone or other device right in there. 12 volt power port. And if we move back, we have a handbrake. Then we have one armrest for the driver. The 500 integrates the trip computer, clock, and certain gauges into a little display right there in the speedometer and tachometer display. If we zoom out to the steering wheel, you control that display using these buttons right here, some buttons on the back of the steering wheel, as well as these buttons right over here to the right of the instrument cluster. Cycling through the trip computer is done with this little button right over here on this turn signal stock. And you can see right now we're on the average fuel economy for trip B. We can scoot over to the average trip fuel economy for trip A, and we can see what it's been like for the longer portion of my time with the car. So average right there, 40.2 miles per gallon, which is very good. If we hit main on that steering wheel button, you'll notice we get a different menu here, and that's where the buttons on the back of the steering wheel are used. We can get to our message reader, our media player controls, user pairing, etc. If we're over on media controls, you can see that we can browse our uh, USB or i device that's connected. You can see artists, genres, albums, playlists, etc. Uh, it is a little bit handier than nothing, but I would prefer a touchscreen or some voice commands in this system. Moving all the way out, you can see that our 500 has this very attractive and comfortable white steering wheel. We don't have any sport grips going on on the steering wheel, but it is very comfortable to drive with. We have our cruise control buttons right over here, our phone and mute buttons right over here, along with the voice command button, and we have our track up and down buttons on that side of the back of the steering wheel and volume up and down on this side. Behind the rear hatch, we have more cargo room than I expected, but less than I would have liked. This is a little bit bigger than the largest roller bag you can carry on a domestic flight. This is a 27 inch roller bag. You can't fit this and a 24 inch roller bag in here, and you can't fit two carry-on style roller bags in the back of the 500 either. They almost fit, but you can't close this rear tailgate hatch if you have both of those bags in there. If you fold the rear seats down, you can see the cargo area expands dramatically, and we now have enough room for easily a weekend trip away for two in the back of the 500. You can even have enough for a weekend trip away for three if you fold just one of the rear seat backs actually, and then someone can fit relatively comfortably right back here behind the front passenger, as long as the front passenger isn't too tall, and as long as the person in the back isn't that tall either. Overall, the 500 scores seven out of 10 points my exclusive trunk comfort index. I do have a tiny assist handle right up here to help me close the trunk lid on myself. The 500 with the manual transmission scores six out of 10 points when it comes to acceleration. Even though 100 horsepower doesn't sound like a whole lot, there's enough get up and go to get out of the way of most things in this Fiat 500. 
I would call this about equal with your average hybrid out on the market. Now, I wouldn't call hybrid-like acceleration a bad thing because we do also get hybrid-like fuel economy in the Fiat 500. I've been averaging about 39 miles per gallon during my week with this 500 and about 650 miles or so. Now my fuel economy was hovering right around 40.5 miles per gallon in mixed driving if I wasn't using the air conditioning and about 34 miles per gallon if I was using the air conditioning. And that 34 miles per gallon is exactly what the EPA says you're going to average in this Fiat 500. Acceleration goes up to about 7 out of 10 if you get the Abarth model. One thing to keep in mind is that even though the Abarth model is the sporty version of the Fiat 500, it doesn't mean the fast version of the Fiat 500 because in truth, the Abarth is just about as fast as a V6 Honda Accord or an EcoBoost Ford Fusion, something along those lines. It is relatively quick for a car this size, but it's not overtly fast. The 500 scores 7 out of 10 when it comes to the ride. This is relatively similar to the Mini Cooper. It's important to keep in mind that with small cars like this, like the Mini Cooper, the Scion IQ, as well as something like the Smart 4.2, that they have a relatively short wheelbase. And a short wheelbase means that the time between when the front suspension impacts an object on the road and the rear suspension impacts an object on the road is relatively short. And you don't have a whole lot of time for the suspension to settle itself in between those two impacts. So it does result in kind of a washboard-like ride with the car. On the bright side, handling is also about 7 out of 10 in this model. It goes up, of course, if you get the Abarth version. Handling is very good because the Fiat 500 is relatively light, has relatively wide rubber for a car this size as well as this weight as well. The combination of lightweight and a great manual transmission is really a nice combo in the 500. It's an awful lot of fun to drive out on these winding mountain roads. Now the manual transmission has a decent amount of throw to it. I would like something with a shorter throw on the shifter, but the clutch pedal has an excellent feel to it. Cabin noise came in at 73 decibels, which is fairly average for this segment. Braking came in at 7 out of 10 points. We had excellent fade resistance in the 500, and the distances are fairly short thanks to the light curb weight. Out on the road, the 500 reminds me a great deal of the first generation new Mini Cooper when it came out in the United States. It's not quite as refined as the current generation Cooper, but it feels more lively and more connected than the current generation Cooper because the Cooper's gotten big and heavy in its latest generation. This is much more of a driver's car than something like the Scion IQ. The Scion IQ reminds me of a pregnant roller skate just a little bit. It's very convenient for parking inside the city, but because there's not a whole lot of difference between the track on the car and the wheelbase on the car, it does lead to kind of a, a peculiar handling feel out on the road. It definitely doesn't feel quite as sorted as the Fiat 500. Of course, when you compare the 500 to your average compact or subcompact sedan, the ride isn't going to be as nice in the 500 as something like a Fiesta or a Mazda 2 or a Mazda 3, something along those lines. Of course, they're not going to be as stylish as the 500, and that's really what you're paying for in this Fiat 500. Now, our Fiat 500 tester is equipped with the optional $1,100 moonroof. It's not an option that I would buy if I'm honest. I think I would spend the extra money to get the Fiat 500C. Part of it is because of the price of the option, but also part of it is because of this sunshade right here. As you can see, it doesn't really block the sun. It more sifts or filters the sun out. It actually gives me a headache. The glare from this on a hot summer's day really hurts my eyes and gives me a headache, but it also makes the interior of the Fiat 500 a decent amount warmer than if you didn't get this or than if you got the 500C, because the 500C has a relatively well-insulated top. Pricing for 2014 starts at $16,195. This particular model, as tested here, is $17,845 because we have some optional wheels as well as the optional moonroof. If you load your Abarth model fully up, then you end up at $26,195. So it is a relatively gentle walk from the base model 500 all the way up to that fully loaded Abarth model. On the subject of options, this moonroof is about $1,000, and as I said earlier, I didn't really care for it. However, there is a perfect solution for that, and that's the Fiat 500C. At $19,695, it is a $3,500 bump over a relatively similarly equipped Fiat 500. However, it's only about $2,500 more than the moonroof equipped model. And for that model, you get a top that opens all the way to the back right here. It's not quite a convertible, but it's far more than a standard moonroof vehicle. I really like the Fiat 500C because it's very practical. You can open and close that canvas top at any time at speeds up to about 55 miles an hour or so. So rather than most convertibles where you have to pull over or be driving extremely slowly in order to operate the top, with the Fiat 500, you can do this at any time on the freeway. Just pull over to the slow lane, go 55, then you can open and close your top, and then you can just speed right back up into traffic. I really found that very handy. Pricing and fuel economy are where the Fiat 500 really wins. 
Now versus something like a Mini Cooper, the 500 definitely has the majority of the Mini Cooper styling things going on. It is cute, it's fun, it's exciting to drive, it is very interesting, and it is definitely a conversation starter much like the Mini Cooper. They both handle relatively well, and it actually feels quite like a Mini Cooper out on the road in many respects. However, the Mini Cooper is a little bit more practical because it does have a more usable back seat and it also has more cargo room in the back. However, that Mini Cooper is going to be significantly more expensive than the Fiat 500. In fact, you can buy a relatively nicely loaded turbo Fiat 500 with the convertible top for it less than you can most Mini Cooper configurations that I found on dealer lots. Now versus something like a Mazda 2 or a Ford Fiesta, the Fiat 500 is a tricky buy because you really have to be after the style of the Fiat 500 or you have to be looking for something that's relatively this small because the Fiesta, the Mazda 2, the Mazda 3, the Ford Focus, anything that's bigger than this in the traditional sedan or traditional hatchback market in the US is going to be more practical. You're gonna get more rear seat room, you're gonna get a fifth seat, you're gonna get more cargo room, etc. You're probably also going to get better performance out on the road. It's not gonna be as cute as this and it's not gonna be as easy to park either. Versus something like a Prius C, the Prius is going to get you much better fuel economy. It's also going to be a little bit more practical than the 500, but it's not nearly as much fun out on the road and it doesn't look quite as cute either. So which vehicle is right for you really depends on your priority level. The Fiat 500 has a decent helping of style and it also gets very good fuel economy as well. My final word on the Fiat 500 is that I wouldn't buy the Fiat 500 in this form. I would buy the 500C because I think it's a much better buy. Even though it is $3,500 more than this, it's one of the most convenient convertibles I've ever driven. I would probably buy the Fiat 500 convertible turbo uh, because that turbo engine really does solve some of the drivability concerns with the Fiat 500. Nine seconds to 60 isn't all that slow, but neither is it particularly fast. I did meet a number of people this week that were a little bit concerned about that in freeway merge situations, but the 500 Turbo really solves that problem. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2014 Fiat 500 Pop. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos. Comment on this video, tell me what you liked and didn't like about this video or about the Fiat 500 in general. You can find me over at facebook.com slash alexandautos. You can email all of your questions to alex at alexandautos.com and I'll see you next week.